Welcome to The One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. My name is Tara. I am your intuitive tarot reader. I use tarot as a tool to open up the channels of your intuition. By tapping into your unawakened subconscious, you will answer the questions that you seek. I am not a psychic, although it may seem like it sometimes. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Always remember, the freedom of choice is your power. Only you can make it happen with your actions. What are you seeking? Hello and welcome to The One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. How is everybody doing today? All right, July 12, 2024. This is a timeless reading though. Whenever it finds you is when it's meant for you. Okay, I'd like to invite in all the loving angels to guide us through this collective reading. Let me be a clear and open channel for the messages coming through. Anything that is not loving, I thank you for your service, can ask you to leave. Thank you for being here. All right. And today we are spraying protection. Mm, it smells so good. Okay. So I do want to start off today with reading you um, <clears throat> my journal here um, about my dream. <laughs> like I said, I've been having a lot of vivid dreams lately. And um, I do want to talk about it. So... Um, so I had an estate sale dream. So three or four of us girls go next door to this lady's house where she is having an estate sale. As soon as we walk in, I am separated from the group. There is so much to look at. I look carefully at everything on the top floor, which is the entrance. I look at the lamp, might be have be... <laughs> Might have been a Tiffany lamp. I see a pile of The Simpsons towels, t-shirts, and I think Derek might like one of these. I go through the pile, which is nicely folded, but don't want to unfold it to look at it. For some reason, I take off my flip-flops and walk downstairs. As soon as I get down there, the carpet is sticky and gross. I step on a piece of pre-chewed gum. It sticks to my left foot on my big toe. I clean it off and I say to myself, I knew it. I don't really want to put my shoes back on because it will ruin them at this point, but I do it anyway. Everything is very old and looks like it has not been touched in years. An older lady between the sixties and eighties lives there and is trying to sell her things. There is a story about her son that died that the neighborhood knows about. It happened years ago. I walk through the second floor with all the bedrooms, three to four in total. Everything is pre-tagged. With a price. Some really old clothes and furniture that is weathered and old. It's more like a museum than a home. As I walk into her son's room, nothing is tagged with a price and is of teenage boy stuff. A few large bean bags and clothes, like he played a lot of video games. I look at one of the smaller of the two bean bags because Derek wants a large bean bag, but they were so dirty, I figured I might be able to wash this one. I decide I can't, so I put it back. As I walk into the other rooms, the beds look like someone else is staying and sleeping in the bed. Blankets tossed around on the bed. So I think, that's weird, I wonder who's sleeping here, and leave the rooms. I walk to the master bedroom, 
and there is a very old costume dress where the rim of the knee length dress has foam in it to puff it out. It has a jacket with it. I think she, the old lady must have had been in drama or ballet. I pulled down the jacket off the mannequin display to check the size, but it was too small for me. I put it back. There are other groups coming into the room to shop now. I see a man lying on a stage in the room with three very large dogs, like lions, husky and thick. I think, wow, those are huge. I book out of there, somewhat scared of them. I think, oh, that explains why the carpet is so sticky, because they piss and poop everywhere. I used to live in a house that was so disgusting like that. You could not walk barefoot with socks on because the floor would grab onto the sock and pull it off your foot because of all the animals living there and the owner didn't care to clean it up or even let the dogs or cats outside to go to the bathroom. So gross. Okay, so that was my dream. <laughs> and I may or may not have anything to do with what comes out in the message today, but I did want to share that with you. Um, maybe somebody resonates with that. Okay, once again, it's getting very hot in here. Get the air conditioner off. Um, we did get an extra little portable conditioner um, in here just in case um, our main one goes out since I do have my dog in here. And um, I finally got a, a phone call for a job interview yesterday on 7-Eleven which is really interesting to me because um, I was looking at the moon last night and it was a crescent moon. And I did have a reading, um, a few readings back where I was showing the candle and I said maybe by the next crescent moon because of the way that the candle looked. And I'll try to post that at the end here if I can remember which one it was. So you can check that out as well. Um, so I just found that interesting that it corresponded like that. And I did try to take a picture of the moon. Um, I was having a little bit of trouble. I think I got at least one good picture. Uh, working on my, my iPhone 15, um, Max Pro or Max Plus, um, you know, I do see a lot of YouTubers who are talking about <clears throat> how to take pictures of the moon with your camera. And so I was trying to mess around with that and figure out how to do it. Okay. Let's see. So they pretty much all want to be popping out from that pile. Pretty much all a red pile here. This one wants to come out. All right. I think that's good for our tea leaves. All right. Let's bring those over. Okay. So we have basket. Recognition, reward for merit. We have purse. Pay attention to your finances. Which is funny when I saw the word purse pop out when it flew out. It reminded me of my dream, um, <clears throat> you know, especially since it was an older woman having an estate sale and she, you know, had a lot of purses in that house. Nest, an emotionally secure, loving family is important to you, right? And we were just talking about the house and then we have door. Opportunities are waiting for you. Ooh, shark, take care or there will be a loss of material wealth. Hmm, interesting, right? <clears throat> so we do have um, like the pay attention here having to do with your finances. And we have elephant, a long journey, either physical or mental will leave you wiser at the end. Absolutely. And we have August. Okay, right now we're in July. So 
So a couple of months from now, or <laughs> sorry, next month. Wow, I had a brain fart. <clears throat> Couldn't think of my months and what were they going. <laughs> Okay, so I do see some opportunities coming in. Um, but yeah, there's something about losing your finances and paying attention to them. Maybe you're invested in the stock market. Um, it reminds me of like, uh, well, I guess it's the Wolf of Wall Street, but I was thinking of like sharks, you know, because I feel like they're sharks as well. Uh, <clears throat> and so maybe there's something to do with that. Um, you know, the economy is doing really bad right now and there's a lot of companies that are shutting down and you gotta be careful of what you invest in you might lose all your money. Um, so you have to have this, um, this wisdom, right? And then we do have the recognition of merit and the opportunities that are waiting for you. <clears throat> so, you know, I was talking about having that job interview. So, um, maybe you'll be getting a new job pretty soon, even though, um, the economy is doing pretty bad. Um, and then of course I was talking about my dog and how, uh, important he is to me and trying to take care of him in case I do get a job and have to leave him here in the RV by himself, um, that he won't die of heat exhaustion if the, the power goes out or, um, the air conditioner goes off. Right. Okay. So, I think I'm going to go straight into the tarot here, where we hit up all the oracles. Okay, and I am starting to do my free tarot readings for my Soulful Revolution class. I have to do 20 free readings. And they're starting to get scheduled out now. So I'm taking care of that and preparing for my interview next week. Okay. Okay, so we have the Seven of Pentacles, this hard work. The Nine of Pentacles, um, reaping the benefits of this hard work. The Fool, <laughs> which is um, a card that represents my husband. <laughs> And uh, the Queen of Pentacles. So this is about taking a leap of faith. So many flies in here. Um, attacking me. Attacking. All right. And then the Queen of Pentacles is about holding on to your finances and being nurturing and aware of them. Right? Really paying attention to them. So now that you put in all this hard work, you're going to reap the benefits of that hard work. But don't be a fool about it. You really got to watch your finances still. So even though, you know, you might get this job and you're getting paid, um, you really need to watch how you spend your money. Okay. Queen of Swords, this is nurturing your mind and listening to the messages coming through. Oh, we got the Hanged Man. And I immediately thought, oh, it's in reverse <laughs> because he's upside down. But this is how it's supposed to be, right? Because he's the Hanged Man. And that's about seeing another perspective of something. Oh, Three of Swords. Oh, that's heartbreak. Okay, and death, whoo, wow, okay, 
Well, I mean, this could represent a physical death of maybe somebody in your family or a loved one. Um, or maybe you just don't get that job, right? And you're heartbroken about it. And so you have to look at it in another perspective. Um, now, you know, with this spread, this is a spread that I created. Uh, this is you and then this is them. So, um, you know, whoever this is really has to think about how they are looking at you, how they perceive you. Um, you know, these ones are a little confusing to me and why they're here. Let's see if we can read what's going on um, with these. So the Three of Swords... These are really short too. That's nice. Okay. All right. Three of swords. All right. So this is upright position. Pain, grief, deception, rejection. Ooh. So maybe you're not going to get that job. Um, you're going to be rejected. Uh, and then if it's in reverse, it's forgiveness, recovery, clarity, introspection. Okay, so maybe somebody's deceiving you. They're trying to make something seem like it's one way, but it's really not. They're kind of messing with your mind here with the messages that they're giving you. They're acting like they're really nurturing um, and loving, and um, maybe they're really not. Death. All right. Where are you? Death. 13. Astrological correspondence. It's Scorpio. You know, the sting, right? It really stings if you get rejected. Death is a harbinger of transformation. He is a reminder that you must shed what is old and familiar to become something new. You must break old habits and release what, release that which is hindering you to make room for something greater. Okay. Um, so maybe you just need to get rid of this person, whoever this person is, and we'll see that in the relationship. Um, this is about change, endings, beginnings, and transition. Reversed, it would be resistance, stagnant, immobility, and obsession. So, um, you know, maybe you're stepping into a new role. And you have to look at it in a different perspective. You know, and so this kind of reminds me of my dream, right? Where the old woman, um, you know, she had a big, beautiful, like, mansion that she had this estate sale and things that she had collected. It was more like a museum. Um, and her son had died. And so she is trying to live her life the best that she possibly can and is selling some of her stuff. But it's like an ongoing thing of where she's constantly having these estate sales. It's not like a one and done. It's just like everything in that house, it has like a price tag on it, except for like the extra bedrooms. It's mostly just the master and like the main rooms, you know, the upstairs where you came in where like the living room should be, but it just looked more like a store. Um, it didn't have like sofas and stuff that you would sit down and like, you know, watch TV or read a book or something. Uh, it was just set up like a store. And then when you walked in, 
it didn't look like anybody lived there until you looked at the beds and noticed that they weren't made up and that somebody had been sleeping there. But <clears throat> she had a son who had died and that's the only person that the neighborhood had known that actually is living there. But there were at least two other bedrooms where I walk in and I see that the beds had been turned up and somebody else was sleeping there. But who knows who it was? Maybe it was her. Maybe she's just sleeping in every single room. Because her bed didn't seem like it was turned up. Yeah, it's like she's trying to preserve her room and make that more of a museum, make that more of the stage where like the dogs stayed. <laughs> So that's interesting. Okay, uh, Spirit, tell me about the relationship here. Ace of Wands. This is about a gift um, of your passion, right? And we have the castle here. And um, kind of like, almost like a moat, right? But it's on its like own island here where it's protected. Okay, Ten of Wands. That's carrying the weight of something. Okay, and then the three of wands, maybe you put some of that weight down and you're looking at this moat here and trying to figure out how you're going to cross, right? Especially because you have all of these that you're carrying on your back. Eight of cups. Okay, and that's um, finding your new path. Which direction to go into? again, right? So we're contemplating the direction here. Um, but we do have this gift. So these are very similar to each other, but then we have this beautiful, wonderful gift. And this is about fire and passion and moving quickly. So, um, you do feel like you're alone here though, right? So within this relationship of whoever this is, right, has died and you are heartbroken. And so now you are alone in this big castle with all your wealth and you're not really sure what to do with it. And it's a new beginning for you. Okay, and you have to take this leap of faith to look at life in a new perspective. Okay, because even here, she looks kind of depressed, right? And she's really thinking about it. And like the bird is almost like the angel that is giving her messages and talking to her. You know, whoever this person was is your angel and they still talk to you, you still talk to them. It's that uh, otherworldly realm, you know, ghost spirits. Maybe of somebody who is still sticking around because um, whatever their job was is undone, right? Um, once again, like that movie Ghost. He still has something to accomplish before they, he can move on. And maybe the son is taking care of this mother through the spirit world, right? And this is a lot of burden on this lady, even though she has all these riches. She's very abundant, but doesn't quite know what to do with her life. Okay, and I'm saying him and her, this could be interchanged. Um, you know, it's just the energy, feminine, feminine and masculine. Okay, and then the situation is that you, you've put in all this hard work. Um, you do have the mind of the, of the queen, right? You have a lot of experience. You're, you're an older woman. And, um, You know, I feel like, like here, it feels like the roles are kind of switched, right? If this is 
the older woman here, and this is supposed to be the son, you know, the son had put on all this hard work and helped her around the house. And since she has this huge castle and now it's just her, it's hard for her to keep up with everything that needs to be taken care of, right? This is why the carpet is all sticky and there's like gum on the floor. And she doesn't really quite know what to do. And she's the one who has to take care of everything now. So the, the roles have been reversed in a sense. And not even necessarily reversed <laughs> because if this person has died, they're no longer there, right? But they are there spiritually in the mind. Okay, and it even looks like, you know, with this wand, there's like flowers growing out of it, which is beautiful and everything, but they're kind of wilting and hanging over. They're not just straight. They're kind of limp. Right? So living this beautiful, abundant life still has some sadness to it. Okay, and the things that are unseen are the seeds have been planted already and the grapes are now growing. So the abundance is there. Okay, this is about wisdom of your finances. And you need to look at them in another way because they're becoming a burden. So this big castle has become a burden because you're under, unable to take care of it yourself. Even though you have all this abundance, you are feeling very sad about it. Okay, this is about a, an ending and a new beginning and you need to move quickly. So you need to decide what it is that you're going to do with this estate. Okay, the action that you need to take is to move on, to go somewhere else, to have fun, to enjoy life. Maybe even get a pet, get a dog that can be a companion for you. Right? We already had the three large dogs in the dream. You know, take your dogs and go on some adventures so that you can overcome this heartbreak. You know, take this journey, cross that moat, get out of the castle. All right, and then the outcome, if you do that, is that you are going to be more abundant than you ever knew. You're going to have so much more abundance than you did when you were in this castle. Okay, it's going to be spiritual abundance. You're going to feel free from these emotions. You're going to nurture yourself. Take care of yourself. And we're going to release these feelings here of despair. Right, and here we have the flower. It's now standing upright. It's not limp over here like that. It's standing straight and tall. Okay, obviously you're still going to have a little bit of grief there. But this is a new beginning for you. To take a journey. This is about manifesting new dreams. What What is in your heart? What is um, the emotion that you have, you know, we have the full moon here. It's about releasing, releasing those old feelings, looking down the path to see where you might want to go. And this looks pretty treacherous here. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. 
but you are going to have a new start. You're going to be reborn. Okay, let's do um, this one. Okay, one, right? This is the new start. First train in the preliminaries. And I just noticed too that the background picture here is a flower that looks very similar to this one here. Commentary. The preliminaries are also known as the four reminders. In your daily life, try to maintain an awareness of the preciousness of human life. All right, which you've been thinking about already because the sun has died. So you are already thinking about how life is short. Two, be aware of the reality that life ends. Death comes for everyone. Wow. Okay, that's crazy to me. Um, that really corresponds, especially with line one. This is line one, this is line two, and they're really aligning with it, right? Because that's you, this is them. Okay, because you too are going to die someday. And so that you need to live your life to the fullest and take that chance. Okay, three, recall to whatever you do, whether victorious, vic oh, vitreous or not, has a result. What goes around comes around. Okay, hmm, what goes around comes around, right? And we do have kind of a little bit of um, just walking around, right? <laughs> walking around, figuring it out. And then four, contemplate that as long as you are too focused on self-importance and too caught up in thinking about how you are good or bad, you will suffer. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, she looks really depressed here because she's really in her mind. And she's suffering. Obsessing about getting what you want and avoiding what you don't want does not result in happiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she's just sitting in her castle here and she's obsessing, right? And maybe she's worried about how she's going to die one day. And that's not making her happy, right? And she's selling all her things. All right, um, 21. Right, and this is like moving backwards, right? So if you were to count backwards, it's two, one. So uh, maybe you're, you're going backwards, right? Because you're in this hanged man mode which is a three and it's about um, collaboration and creativity. So you really need to get out in the world, um, be creative and start meeting some new people and reinvigorating your life. Okay, always maintain only a joyful mind. Commentary, constantly apply cheerfulness. If no other reason than because you are on the spiritual path. Yeah, spiritual path here, right? Have a sense of gratitude to everything, even difficult emotions, because of their potential to wake you up. Ooh, right? So even though you had this really horrible thing happen to you, uh, you really still need to wake up every day and be grat have gratitude so that you can be happy and to wake yourself up to make yourself feel like this instead of this, to be abundant. It's getting really hot in here. All right, let's see if we can quickly go through these. I'm 
liberator, light aperture attributes, feeling, freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns, shadow attributes, imposing your own tranny over those you claim to liberate, ignoring uh, legitimate constraints. Okay, we have to liberate yourself. All right, let's see. These are in order. helps to liberate us from self-inflicted tranny and negative thought patterns and beliefs, spiritual sluggishness, poor nutrition, destructive relationships, or addictive behavior, invaluable ally in freeing us from old entrenched beliefs and attitudes. You don't have to be a charismatic leader to have this archetype. Shadow liberator manifest in corporate, political, religious, and spiritual leaders who impose their own tranny over others. Ask whether you have a lifelong pattern of helping to free others from injustice, adverse economic or social conditions, or simply from their misconceptions. All right, I am in a race against time right now because it is so freaking hot in here, okay? Contemplation. And love. Let's see. Contemplation, reflection, understanding, and life lessons. Okay, take some St. John's wart, symbolism of the card. The contemplation card depicts the priestess of contemplation, peacefully lost in thought. She is writing her memoirs in a book of shadows. Mm -hmm. All of the wisdom of the well, of a life well lived and all the lessons she has learned are recorded for others in moments of quiet meditation. She is surrounded by the St. John's wort plant, including the flowers and seed pods. The Scottish Gaelic words, solas libahar, appear, which translate to book of light. Right, so maybe, um, this person, you are going to write a book about your, your experience here. In the modern day Wicca, the more opt term book of light and shadows is often used to name a witch's gray more or book of magic. The priestess is in her twilight years and almost ready to leave the physical world. Her spirit body is starting to shine through. Okay, she's in her twilight years, right? And almost ready to leave this physical world. So we're talking about that and how you're thinking about how we're all going to die. Her spirit body is starting to shine through in the form of golden wings and a halo. The priestess is happy and content. And as she looks back and reflects on her life, she knows that she has done her best. Okay, and then we have love. And then we're going to have to cut this off so I can turn on my air. I'm feeling sick now. Okay. Relationships, connections, possibilities. Rose. Symbolism of the card. The love card depicts a couple being hand-fasted underneath a red rose tree. 
The image is one of sweet commitment and love. Two dragonflies dart around the roses, symbolizing the change from youthful desire to a deeper, more mature emotional connection. Right, and the dragonflies represent somebody who's visiting you from um, death. Okay. Uh, divination. The appearance of the love card suggests an important new relationship is about to change your life for the better. It could be a romantic relationship, a business relationship, or the blossoming of a friendship. Keep your heart open to new possibilities. All right. Take that new path. Okay. Don't resist it. You are going to die one day. Let's live life to the best right now. Okay. And not um, dwell on what happened in the past because you are still here right now. One day you'll be reunite, reunited with your loved one. And that will be a magnificent day. But right now you are still here. Okay. Thank you. That is your reading. I need to turn on the air. I am out of here. Peace. I want to thank you and our angels for being present for the messages that have come through in this reading. If you found this to be helpful, please like and share this content so others can benefit as well. Seek the subscribe button and don't forget to get notifications so you never miss a reading. The more love you share, the more love you receive. And you can find more love right here in these other videos. For more information about this channel, personal readings, swag, and donations, check the links in the description box.